East Georgia and the Low Country. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. Good morning, everyone. It is right now 8 o'clock on your Sunday morning. Thanks so much for waking up with us here on WJCL 22. I'm Emma Hamilton. We're going to get things started this morning with that certified most accurate forecast with our meteorologist, Melissa Hall. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Emma. We are kind of starting today off a lot like we started Saturday off. Did you already take the dog out and need to grab the umbrella? Well, you probably live down in the southern part of the area because we're starting to see some breaks in the clouds as you look at downtown Savannah, but then you move a little further out toward the coast and not quite in getting those breaks just yet, but the clouds will be thinning through the day. So if you've had some showers already, don't worry. It is about to come to an end and that sunshine that we got yesterday afternoon that turned into a beautiful Saturday. It's going to be back around this afternoon. We got a little bit of a breeze out of the west southwest. You can see it behind me with that flag there at Harbor Town. If you are going to make it out to the RBC today, like I said, don't worry about the raincoat because while you have had some passing showers this morning across the area, it's mainly been south of I-16 because that's where that front has been stalled out just hanging out. So your RBC heritage forecast looking great. Clouds keep thinning. It's going to be dry and comfortable by the afternoon. Temperatures actually want to be right around average, even above average, topping out in the mid 70s at the coast, close to 80 for everybody else. Now, Emma, we keep the warmer weather coming for a little bit, but that forecast, even though it's going to clear out today, it doesn't stay clear on that seven day. I'll show you in a few minutes. Melissa, thank you so much. Well, the Tormenta Football Club had its home opener yesterday and our Jessica Batista was there for the game. It's opening night for Tormenta FC. Players excited to play in front of fans as the COVID-19 pandemic continues. The whole goal is to play in front of as many people as possible, so it's it's thrilling, especially on opening night, to uh, to get a, a nice, decent crowd here. Starting a little before kickoff, fans had the opportunity to do their part in ending the pandemic by getting vaccinated. We're going to be offering uh, Moderna COVID-19 vaccines uh, to anyone that, that is, is, is wanting it. Pormena partnered with Forest Heights Pharmacy to host the vaccine clinic. This is really exciting. Uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of people who, who probably, you know, are uncomfortable coming to a pharmacy or, you know, everybody gets nervous when they go to doctor's office pharmacy. So hopefully we can we can come to them in an environment where they're comfortable. Tormenta fan Tracy Rivera was among those who received a Moderna shot at the game. I think it's awesome. I didn't get the vaccine because I haven't had time. So it was really convenient for me. And to help promote social distancing, they have closed off every other bleacher. So people are spread apart and can watch the game safely. Well, I think they're taking the precautions necessary for the game. So I think it'll be everything will be good. The team said 34 fans got vaccinated at the game tonight. Reporting in Statesboro, Jessica Batista, WJCL 22 News. Unfortunately, Tormenta did lose their game last night, but their next game is next Saturday versus Union Omaha. The Seven Mile Bridge Marathon returned to the Florida Keys yesterday after taking 2020 off due to the pandemic. This year, the 40th annual event was limited to only U.S. based runners who registered for the canceled race in 2020. Now, it's normally one of the most popular running events in the Southeast and uh, Look at this course. You can see why. Check out this amazing panoramic view of the water where the Gulf meets the Atlantic. To reduce the number of COVID-19, runners were staggered in socially distanced groups of 10 and had to wear masks before and after the race. They also wore electronic trackers to help determine their finish times. Right now, investigators in Glen County are trying to figure out who shot and killed a Brunswick teenager early yesterday morning. It happened around 2 o'clock in the morning in the area of Cypress Mill Road and Golden Isles Parkway. Officers say they found the 17-year-old unresponsive on the edge of the roadway. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he later died from his injuries. Savannah firefighters are investigating what caused a home on Cubbage Street to go up in flames early yesterday morning. When firefighters arrived, heavy smoke and flames were seen coming from the roof. Officials say no one was inside at the time of that fire. Two people are seriously injured after their truck slammed into a building. It happened at around 3 a.m. yesterday morning on Victory Drive near Whitaker Street. Savannah police say no one was in no one in the building was hurt, but that the driver of the pickup truck and a passenger were taken to the hospital. An investigation into the cause is now underway. 
And in Beaufort County, one person is dead following a crash on Hilton Head Island. South Carolina Highway Patrol, who's investigating, says it happened on Lego Mutton Road at about 5.30 Friday, af Friday afternoon. An SUV ran off the road, hitting a tree and overturned. We're told the driver was not wearing a seatbelt and unfortunately died at the scene. Last night, vigils in Indianapolis after another mass shooting. Eight people were killed by a lone gunman at a FedEx facility, and more than half of them belong to the city's sick community. The gunman's family now saying they tried to get him help. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the very latest. Tonight, two solemn moments. People in Indianapolis organizing two separate vigils this weekend to honor the victims from another mass shooting. Show empathy. Show love. Police say 19-year-old Brandon Hole, a former FedEx employee, killed eight people at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis late Thursday, wounding five others before taking his own life. Tonight, the suspect's family releasing a statement saying they're devastated at the loss of life, offering their sincerest apologies to the victims and saying they tried to get Hole the help he needed. Half of the victims are members of the local Sikh community, like 66-year-old Amarjeet Johal, pictured here in the middle. I posted her picture everywhere because she is not going to be a statistic. She has a story. She's a person. The victim's ages range from 19 to 74 years old. One woman related to two of the deceased says she's hoping family members from India can pay their respects. We can't even schedule a funeral. But we have to make sure that our cousin, I mean, my sister's brother can get here so he can see her one last time. Police are still unsure of the suspect's motive, but a spokesman for the Sikh community is pointing to the victims and fears his neighbors were directly targeted. Fear is of the unknown, and people do not know about, uh, about us because of our appearance, about what we wear, and beard, and turban, and uh, that's why most of the time we are the victim of hate crimes. This is the third mass shooting this year in Indianapolis. Ika Jiachi, ABC News, Washington. The Air Force's Thunderbirds headlined the Cocoa Beach Air Show, but a World War II dive bomber almost stole the show. The TBM Avenger was forced to make an emergency water landing at Cocoa Beach after a major engine failure. The antique Navy plane warplane was extensively restored before returning to flight last year. The pilot was the only person on board, but thankfully was not injured. An investigation is now underway to determine what caused that emergency landing. Well, let's take a look at the latest coronavirus numbers across Georgia. More than 1,200 people testing positive for the virus yesterday, and 34 people lost their lives. South Carolina added more than 600 new cases and 12 deaths in its latest update. The most recent numbers available from the state are from Thursday. The time now is 8.07 on your Sunday, and straight ahead, a royal funeral for Prince Philip. Loved ones gathering together for a final farewell. Coming up, I'm going to have a look at your certified most accurate forecast, but let's take a live look outside before we head off to commercial break. Those clouds are already starting to break apart. That sun's popping out and things are going to be warming up. We're in the low 60s right now. We're going to get back into the upper 70s for most of us, but those rain chances will be returning. We'll talk about it in that certified most accurate forecast right after this. Get that forecast anytime, though, with our WJCL 22 News app.